That's the shot. Look at me. Look at What Done. Just before I turned 12, my, my father, he gave me this little German camera called uh, an Agfa Abisolette. And he gave me like 10 rolls of film. He said, have fun. And I developed my first roll of film and I saw my first photograph come up in this, out of this, on a clear piece of paper from the bottom of the tray, just this magic image appeared and I was hooked. And it was great to, to take pictures of my brother and my mom. My mom was a very beautiful woman. I, I, I realized that there was something that really made me feel in control by having the, the camera in my hand. But when I went to college, you know, I, I, it was just time to put away the, that kind of a toy. I wasn't interested in, the, in that. I studied philosophy and psychology. When I finished college, I wound up being drafted into the United States Army. And that's when I discovered photography again. My job was to basically get returning Vietnam vets to stop doing heroin because everyone came back from Vietnam with a Nikon or a Minolta from the PX. When we started talking about photographs, they would talk about their experiences and they would recall certain traumatic moments. And so I began to understand that the photograph had this metaphoric, uh, cathartic aspect to it that I had never thought about before. I mean, I, I took portraits as an amateur, but it wasn't until my AIDS projects, which is called AIDS Outreach from 1989 to 1991, when I began to notice that a portrait was a way to have a one-on-one -on -one interaction with, an, with a, a sitter. So, and I really concentrated in, on the eyes. I mean, all that corny stuff about the eyes being the window to the soul. The eyes is how you recognize someone's intellect. And to capture that as a way of, to capture the portrait that way is, is to make the person feel comfortable enough to trust you. Look at me now. Coming ahead, keep turning towards me, keep coming. The stories repeat themselves over and over again. And so, you know, you, you, you're in a place, you think you're home, and then something happens, whether it's political, cataclysmic, war, what have you, and then you're not there anymore. And so the displacement, the sense of otherness, the sense of being not of it. Everyone I've photographed, you know, I, there, there's, a, there's a kinship that I have with each one of those people in some way or other, because we all know what it's like to not be at home. <laughs> 